Kolhapur, which is a local uh, active local chapter of NPTEL SWAM. Bharti Vidya Pet, deemed to be University of Pune, is a multi-state, multidisciplinary university established by Honorable Dr. Patangaraoji Kadam Sahib. Bharti Vidya Pet Institute of Management, Kolhapur, is uh, a constituent unit of Bharti Vidya Pet, deemed to be University of Pune. Earlier, it was affiliated to Sivaji University. But from 2004, it is the constituent unit of Bharti Vidya Pet deemed to be University Pune. It is a local chapter of NPTEL SWAM since December 2019. The local chapter was established under the guidance of Dr. Rajesh Kanthesar, the director of the institute. As I spoke of the local chapter and in behalf of Bharti Vidya Pet, deemed to be University Pune and Institute of Management Kolhapur, I, Professor Nirpesh Kumar, take this opportunity, opportunity to welcome our experts from IIT Chennai, Madras, and the experts from IIT Bombay to create the awareness about MOOC, about any of the courses offered by NPTEL, the credit transferred policy, under MOOC implementation and NEP 2020. I welcome the dignitaries of the university, Dr. Sivaji Rao Kadam, sir, the Chancellor, Bharti Vidya Pet, deemed to be University of Pune. Dr. Vivek Sauji, sir, Vice Chancellor, Bharti Vidya Pet, deemed University of Pune. Dr. Vishujit Kadam, sir, Pro Vice Chancellor, Bharti Vidya Pet, deemed to be University of Pune. Dr. Sachin Vernekar, sir, Dean, Faculty of Management Studies, Bharti Vidya Pet, deemed University of Pune. Dr. Kirti Gupta, Madam, from IQSC cell of BVDU Pune. I would like to welcome all the participants, teachers, faculties, students present here through YouTube Live. Today's session guest is Dr. Kamal Alaskar, sir, the HOD of Computer Application Department who will introduce about Bharti Vidya Pet University and the MOOC implementation policy at Bharti Vidya Pet University level. Dr. Kamal Alaskar, sir, is a renowned academician and researcher having more than 27 years of experience. Welcome you, sir. Now I'm handing over the session to Dr. Kamal Alaskar, sir, for giving a brief introduction about Bharti Vidya Pet University Pune. Sir, you please unmute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you, Nirpesh. On behalf of Bharti Vidya Pet Deemed University and Bharti Vidya Pet Deemed University Institute of Management, I thank you one and all those who are hosting this program and those who are coordinating this program. Let me introduce about Bharti Vidya Pit and then after Bharti Vidya Pit Deemed University and Bharti Vidya Pit Deemed University Institute of Management. Bharti Vidya Pit Deemed University, Bharti Vidya Pit in, established in 1964, 10th May 1964, which is having more than 180 branches spread all over India, starting from pre-primary, up to post-graduation and PhD programs. Bharti Vidya Pit Deemed University established in 1996, 26th April, and which are having 29 uh, constituent unit. And now again, it is merged, uh, 41 constituent units are there. Bharti Vidya Pit Deemed University Institute of Management, it is one of the constituent unit of uh, Bharti Vidya Pit Deemed University, which is already mentioned by Nirpesh. Professor Nirpesh. So these programs, which are which are coordinated by him uh, since last uh, three years, uh, 2019, he is coordinating these activities, which is definitely useful for our students and our faculty members. As you all are aware, uh, students, faculty members, you all are aware in NEP 2020, um, most of the most of the semesters, uh, starting from the third semester itself, the MOOC courses are introduced and it becomes compulsory for everyone. Unless and until you complete this course, you will not get the graduation certificate and post-graduation certificate. 
fortunately for our university uh, we introduced from third semester in mooc courses and um, as far as the university syllabus is concerned whatever it is there that means what actually uh, given by the board of academic uh, council and other board of studies we are introducing we are um, inducting some subjects but some of the subjects which are new uh, the the burning subjects which are required in the market which we can get through the nptel uh, mooc courses so this will be definitely useful for our students especially for our students and even for our faculty members um, uh, the request for to the students is that you have to attend this type of courses get the get the information from different sources especially it is available from iit now today it is hosting by iit uh, chennai and iit mumbai uh, we again officially a uh, vote of thanks will be given by one of our faculty member but again i am thankful to the coordinators of this uh, MOOC, uh, nptel courses thank you thank you very much Over to you, Niripesh, and the coordinating team. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I request the expert team to uh, keep the session on. Okay, uh, uh, respected Professor Kamal, uh, Professor Niripesh, other faculty members were connected through Zoom or through YouTube sessions. A warm welcome to this. NPTEL Awareness e-workshop being organized by NPTEL in association with Bharti Vidyapit Institute of Management, Kolhapur. Uh, just let me share my uh, presentation so that we can proceed further. Okay. Uh, as we said, this program is being organized in association with Bharti Vidyapit Institute of Management, Kolhapur. During the part of our uh, discussion today, we'll be talking, uh, giving an introduction to NPTEL and what SOEM is. NPTEL online certification, that is the prime focus. Additionally, different other associated activities that includes credit transfer mechanism, domain certification, internship opportunity for the students, soft skill training, gate examination related preparation portal, faculty development program, uh, then some aspects of the local chapter, NPTEL plus different other initiatives. One of them is definitely NPTEL plus. Uh, we'll talk about that. And also, we'll also just highlight uh, two of the newer initiatives launched by IIT Madras in the form of a four years DSP. BS degree program, which can be attended by students who are already enrolled in any program in an institute or faculty or employed professionals. Along with the uh, talk, we'll also be taking the questions as and when they are posted onto the YouTube. Okay, so it will not be just one way. If you have got any doubt, you can definitely ask the questions in the Google, uh, sorry, YouTube ch uh, chat box. We'll take that question as and when you years and proceed. So NPTEL is an acronym, National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. It started its journey 20 years back. This is for the last 20 years, we are in existence. From 2003, what when we started our journey, 2003 to 2014, our main focus was to provide high quality, affordable education at large scale. We started our journey with this vision. During this 2003 to 2014, we created the contents. That is, we recorded the contents created uh, by recording the say lectures delivered by the faculty members in our classrooms and made it available for the learner communities. From 2014, aligning with the global trend, when there was a need to actually uh, maybe provide course level certification. That is, I go through the course and then. I write an exam and show to the outside world that, okay, I have done this course and this is my level of knowledge on that. So we started offering online certification, that's a course level certification 
in 2014. Now, in addition to what we offer, we are also interacting with different stakeholders, be it autonomous engineering colleges or general degree colleges and universities to for promotion and use of these courses in the credit transfer framework as has been uh, actually approved by the two higher education regulators, UGC and uh, AICT. During the period of our say 20 years of existence, we have created more than 3000 hours of unique courses. Okay, offering different disciplines that we'll talk a little later. These contents are available to the global audience through either YouTube channel of NPTEL HRD or through our nptl.ac.in portal. So you can see the number of YouTube subscription that crosses 4.5 million. Although it's not an entertainment channel, this number speaks about the popularity of NPTEL courses for all learners spread across the globe. If you see the number of viewerships, that also is pretty high, it's more than 1.6 billion. We have got more than 62,000 hours of contents, out of which many of the contents have got English subtitles too. So these contents are offered. We are saying that NPTEL through which we are offering the courses. The NPTEL is a program which started as a program of seven older IITs and ISC Bangalore. And now we have actually spread our horizon. We have included many, many institutions, a newer IITs, few IISCRs, triple ITs, few institutes from other, uh, say, abroad, as well as within the country, which are centrally funded technical institutions, law institutions, we have added them. But once we say that we are offering the course, then we need a platform through which we will be offering. So ministry has come out with a new platform called Swayam. It's an umbrella body through which anyone in India who wants to offer an online course in the MOOCs format will be offering. So it has got few coordinators, each targeting a particular segment of learners. Like NPTEL is one of the coordinator of Soyam, who are primarily mandated to offer the courses focusing on the undergraduate and postgraduate level engineering education. But since all IITs or ISCs, they have other branches of uh, say studies like basic sciences, humanities, social sciences, management, we are offering the courses from all these disciplines also. Additionally, by associating our NPTEL program with other few institutions, we are also offering courses from certain courses from law, health sciences, and all. So what started in 2014, a course level certification, we are offering these courses in MOOCs format through SOYAM. That means all our courses, although the courses are coming from NPTF, they are called SOYAM courses, since all courses are offered through SOYAM platform. This can be taken by anyone, anytime, from anywhere. That is irrespective of what he or she is currently pursuing whether they are a student, faculty, employed, or maybe a homemaker or retired person, anyone having an interest to learn will be able to join the course and learn the subject of their choice. We follow a four quadrant approach that we'll talk a little later. Courses we offer aligning with the semester systems of Indian universities, that is either in January or in July. Max Maximum duration of the courses are of three months. That is either we complete the courses by April or by October, depending on what is the starting time. We release the tentative timeline when the course will start, when the examination will be conducted, all this information much ahead of time, along with the list of courses. Say today we are in July, and from July we'll be having a large number of courses which are open for enrollment, which will be starting from July or August. The time schedule we will be seeing in the next slides. But if I want to see what all courses are forthcoming, say from January 2024, what is the timeline? I will be able to see it. 
so that the colleges and the universities who are taking these courses for trading transfer, they can take a decision beforehand. So for the January run courses, we open the courses for enrollment by November, mid of November. And for July run courses, we open the enrollment by middle of May. During July 2023, we are offering about 690 plus courses whose enrollment is currently open and whose courses are scheduled to start from 24th of July. The detailed timeline will be discussing in the later slides. So currently, whatever you are maybe pursuing, you can join in any number of courses that interest you without paying any cost because the whole program is supported by the Ministry of Education, Government of India. So for joining into the course for learning purpose, number is not limited. The branch or subject that you want to pursue is not limited by what you are doing currently. But if you want to write the examination, that examination is not free. We take some charges that we'll see a little later. So as we said that these courses are offered in a four quadrant approach. Now, any course in a regular university semester will have a structure. That means it will have a start date, it will have end date. Every week, certain amount of contents will be delivered. There will be certain other activities in addition to just delivering the lecture. Like you'll be having face-to-face -face interaction in a classroom. Then there could be additional class test, periodical class test being conducted. The faculty may give supplementary study materials all these are actually part of four quadrant approach. The main component is the lecture. The recorded lectures of a faculty in the form of say 30 minutes duration, they are made available every week. About five to six lectures, about 2.5 to three hours of lectures are actually made available to the learners every week. So at the rate of 2.5 hours of lectures per week, we have got three variation of courses in terms of hours, it is 10 hours, 20 hours, and 30 hours. And these 30 hour course will be completed within a period of 12 weeks at the rate of 2.5 hours of lecture per week. Similarly, we'll be completing a 20 hour course in eight weeks duration, and it will take four weeks time to complete a 10 hour course. Okay, so one of the component is a pre-recorded lecture modules. Second, as in a classroom, there is a face-to-face -face interaction. The same thing is replicated here, but through an web-based interaction portal. Since the students' numbers are not limited to what can be accommodated in a classroom, it could be very large or it could be very small also. Because of that, in a MOOCs platform, the interaction takes place through a web-based interactive portal. Additionally, the faculty will be interacting with the students periodically through a live session that we are conducting today. So the faculty will be taking the question posted by the students in YouTube chat box and will be responding to that. Okay. Additionally, you know, there are PMRF scholars, Prime Minister Research Fellow scholars, as part of their regular requirement, they're supposed to take some teaching load also in the institute. So the PMRF scholars are utilized here for certain problem solving sessions. We know the contents, the lecture contents will only talk about the theoretical aspects and the practical or the problem solving uh, skills will be tested in the form of assignment problems. So the PMRF scholars will be utilized, the services of the PMRF scholars will be utilized to help the students understand how to solve the problems based on the theory, what has been discussed in the lectures. So they will be talking about say previous assignments, how to solve those problems. So this is additional component. In addition to regular interaction, the faculty may also provide some supplementary study materials in the form of maybe the PowerPoint slides, the text transcript. We understand many of the students may not be very comfortable in the beginning to learn directly from the faculties who are teaching in it or delivering the lectures in English because they might have studied 
up to their 10th or 12th standard in vernacular mediums, say be it Marathi, Tamil, Telugu, Bengali, Odia, or whatever languages. So in the beginning, they may have some difficulty to help the students of that category of, category of learners. We try to provide English text transcript. We'll see what to see about all these text transcripts, where they are available. And also the faculty may give either handwritten notes or free web resources, links to free web resources as supplementary study materials. Once I go through the lectures, clear my doubts, get detailed, uh, say, further study materials to get deeper understanding, then I am exposed to certain assignment questions related to that week's content. So these assignment questions will be about 10 to 15 questions, maybe they are all mostly auto-graded, that is either the questions are multiple choice type with one or more correct options, then it could be numerical problems, you solve the problem, then put the numerical answer in the text box. It could be a small sentence that you have to put. These are all auto-graded. But somewhere the faculty may also choose to test your writing skill. They may ask you to write, say, within 100 words, certain para, or maybe a design document. You have to design something and upload that document uh, through the portal. So these are all your, these all documents will be evaluated manually by the faculty. Okay, so this type of weekly assignments are given. So if the course is for four weeks, there will be four assignments. There will be eight assignments for a 20 hour course and for a 30 hour course, just because it is offered over a period of 12 weeks, there will be 12 assignments. This assignment submission timeline is 10 days. After 10 days, you can see the performance of the students in the portal that out of 100, each assignment is graded out of 100, out of 100, what is the score of the student? This is important just because a part of the assignment score is actually connected to your final certification. So if you just see, okay, you have gone joined into the course, you have seen the videos, interact with the faculty, either through forum or YouTube chat box or PMRF scholars, gone through the supplementary study materials and submitted the assignments. But then you are now interested to write the examination. Now for the July run courses, the examination registration is already open in the portal. If you have already decided on that, you can join here. Now for joining into the course, as we said, it works in a AAA model, that is anytime, anywhere by any anyone. But for writing the exam, the exams are conducted in designated exam centers where our exam partner TCS will be conducting the exam. We are having more than about 150 to 200 centers spread, cities spread across the country where we conduct the examination. So the students during the exam registration, which is done through a separate portal, not through SWAYAM, they will be giving the course name, the exam date is decided and which city they will be looking for for writing the exam. Based on the choice of their city, they have, will be allocated a center where they will be going with the this, your official government issued identity card for writing the exam. The exam could be in online mode or offline. The difference between online and offline mode is that in online, the question papers as well as the answer to be submitted, they all take in online mode. That is, in computer itself, we have to do everything. Whereas in a case of offline examination, the question papers will be appearing in my terminal. I'll be given a conventional answer script where I have to solve the problems or write the answer for manual evaluation by the faculty. That's the only difference. We'll be having designated exam date and on each exam date, we can have exam in two sessions. That is between forenoon between nine to 12, and in the afternoon between 12 to 2 to 5. Okay, so these are the two sessions. Examination fee, as we said, the, in case of joining into the course for learning purpose, you don't pay anything just because the, it is funded by the ministry. But for writing, writing the certification examination, a fee of 1000 rupees is payable by the learners. This fee is irrespective of whether the course is 4, 8 or 12 weeks. 
Okay. However, complying to the government requirement, we are providing a fee waiver of up to 50% for the certain category of learners. That is, if the candidates belong to SC or ST or persons with deed of uh, persons with disability, they get a partial fee waiver of 50% examination. After the exams are over, we declare the result within a timeline of 30 days. These certificates were we issue, they are soft copy of the certificates. They will bear about the complete details of the course. The sample certificate will show and also will appear a, you can say, QR code so that the certificate authenticity can be verified by anyone who wants to check it without referring it to NPT. Now, the certification criteria, we said that it's an online or offline exam, whatever it is. The exam is conducted out of 50 or 100, depending on the course duration. If it is a four weeks course, the total marks is 50. If it is eight and 12 weeks course, then the total marks is 100. So in the final certification, you have got two components for non-programming courses. That is 75% weightage comes from your final certification exam and 25% weightage is taken based on your performance in the assignment, weekly assignment. Okay, so for non-programming, there are two components, 75% and 25%. These are the two components. Whereas for a programming course, you will have three components, one additional component because in a weekly assignment, in addition to the, say, multiple choice of questions, the students will also be exposed to certain programming tests. Say, if you're writing the exam for C, C++, plus plus java python berilog and all you will be every week they will be giving certain programming assignments and and the before the final examination you will be having a programming test which will be in a non proctored manner that is just before the examination starts there will be one dedicated day which will be published beforehand on that particular date the programming test will be conducted in two sessions one in the morning and there is a during daytime and one in the evening. You can attend both of this exam or any of this exam. And the score, whichever score is higher, that will be taken. A 25% will come from there for programming test. So for programming courses, 50% weightage goes to the final exam, 25% each goes for the non proctored programming test and assignments. How do we calculate assignment score? Say we are in a eight weeks course. So best six assignments score, whatever is the final, say out of 600, whatever score you have received, an average will be taken and 25% will be taken from there directly for the certification. If you do not submit the required number of assignments, then say instead of eight, you have submitted only, sorry, uh, in a eight weeks course, instead of six, you have submitted only four, then the remaining two requirements will be considering you have received zero and accordingly your average score, average assignment score will fall and 25% score will also fall. Now for getting a certificate, it is essential that you get at least 40% score individually in each component. That is in assignment, your average assignment score should not fall below 25 or in other terms you can say it should not be less than 10 out of 25 in assignment. Similarly, for the final certification, out of 100, it should not be less than 40 or 30 out of 75. That should be the minimum point. The certificate is provided. We do a five point grading. That is, if the consolidated score is less than 40, the, consider, the student is considered unsuccessful and no certificate is provided. However, 40 to 59, consolidated score, you are successfully completing the course. 60 to 100 total score will earn a allied tag on the certificate. The allied word will be written onto the certificate to indicate the score is above 60. If your score is between 75 to 89, then in addition to that allied word, you'll be having a silver medal symbol 
printed onto the certificate or score between 90 to 100 you will be getting a light plus a gold uh, you can say seal that is gold medal seal will be printed onto the certificate additionally if your score is very high and if you are within the top 1%, 2% or 5% of the scorers, then these top part seals also be reflected in your certificate. This is how a sample certificate looks like. Elite gold indicates that the student is within top 90 to 100% marks. Okay. The certificate will carry your photograph, name, course name, individual component, what is your score, when the course was taken, how many students actually successfully completed the course during this time and which institute offered the course nptl logo swayam logo and qr code okay the important points to remember is that if you are enrolling into the course using a particular email id register for the course using the same email id only because nptl will recognize or swayam will recognize your yourself with your unique email id so email id should not be changed during the course of your learning phase through nptl before enrolling into the course ensure that you check the exam dates because on any exam date there are two sessions and not more than two exams can be actually attended on a particular day so you may wonder that okay i have selected two courses and hope the exams are on the same day how do I manage? Yes, you will be able to manage because we will be allocating one exam in the morning session and another in the afternoon. So two exams can be written on a particular day. So there will be three days of exam in a semester and at maximum at the rate of two exams per day, you will be able to write six exams in a semester. In an exam, physical calculators are not permitted. That's very important to note, particularly for certain courses where you will be requiring the support of calculators. Then how do you solve it? Usually you will be having access to online, online screen, on-screen calculators. That means if you just ask any of your uh, friends who might have done that, they will be having the links to that. That is, you can utilize that links and practices beforehand during the weekly assignment so that you are fully aware how to use that on screen calculator. Okay. Then, if your college is taking credit transfer and you expect large number of students to be writing the exam for better logistic management by NPTEL, that is, your students are not inconvenienced to move far off or allocated a center which is far off from their place of residence, we would suggest that you alert the NPTEL beforehand that, okay, from our college or our university these many people are expected to write the exam and if possible name the uh, course name, provide the course name also so these are the timelines we say that okay there are three variation of courses one is four weeks some courses are eight weeks and others are 12 weeks duration so what do we do these courses are offered in january and july and not all universities will start at the same time some universities will start in the maybe 15, 20 days ahead of other universities. Since our timelines are fixed, what do we do? Four weeks and eight weeks courses are split into two groups. One set of four weeks, one set of eight weeks, and all 12 weeks courses will start from 24th of July. And second set of four weeks and eight weeks will start one month later. That is from 21st of August. While the enrollment for the first set of courses will end on 31st of July by 5 p.m., the second set of courses enrollment will be restricted to that particular date itself. That is 25th August itself, the enrollment will close. The exam for the first set of four weeks and first set of eight weeks will be conducted on 24th of September in two sessions. Similarly, for the remaining courses, that is all 12 weeks and second set of four and eight weeks, we'll have exam on two days, that is 28th and 29th October in two sessions on each day. That means four exams can be taken there, two exams here. Exam registration date, as we said, that exam registration form is open. 
exam registration closes for first set of courses on 14th August and the second set of courses by 11th September. Okay. However, kindly note that 12 week courses enroll exam registration will be closing with first set of courses on 14th of August. That is with normal fee, but you can say pay late fee and register by up to say 18th August or 15th September as the case may be. So now if you have selected, okay, if you have decided that okay, I will be taking the course, what are the steps that we should follow? First, you can go to the nptl.ac.in portal to check what are the two components. One, what are the timelines? That timelines that we have just shown you. So you can just see the timelines here. This timeline is provided. When the courses are starting, the exam registration, all these details are provided here. Additionally, if you want to see, okay, what are the courses that are available at this point of time? I'll just go click on to the courses and here I have got all 690 plus course list. How they are split, you can see the course ID, discipline, course name, the faculty, institute that is offering the course. What is the duration of the course? Then you find there are courses which are written as rerun and few courses are written as new. The distinction between these two is that new means this is the first time the course is being offered. Whereas rerun means this course was created earlier, it was offered earlier, maybe once or more times, and it is on say rerun mode, that is being re-offered. So once the course is on a rerun mode, naturally the contents are available already into the portal. So if I am actually looking for a rerun course, I'll be able to see certain components of the rerun courses like videos, previous assignment, one set of assignments, all those things are available. Along with that, during the last time, once the course was offered, how many people enrolled into the course? How, what was their performance? How many people wrote the exam? How many, about 90 plus, all these data will be available, including if there are code stoppers, who are the code stoppers. So this will give you some idea like what is the level of the course and what is the approximate pass percentage in this course. So depending on the level of your students, the college can actually look into this document, the statistics and prescribe courses that are suitable for that particular group of learners. Okay. Additionally, what do you find here? You find the start date, end date, exam registration date, whether the course is of undergraduate level or postgraduate, whether it's a core course or elective course, whether these courses are for the faculty development program and not. And if this course is linked to any of the domains, we'll talk more about these domains FTP later. But again, just to reiterate that if the course is marked for the faculty development program, it's not necessary that this has to be done by faculty only. Only advantage is that this can be taken by faculty, students or anyone. Only if the faculty is taking the course, they will be able to avail a faculty development certificate on completion of the course. That's the only difference. But these courses are open for everyone. The course enrollment page, all this data is available here. So after I go through all these documents, then I can take decision on that. Say now we are looking for the number of courses that are available or forthcoming or the timelines of the forthcoming semester, January 2024. I can go to this MPTL semester information document. This is archive.nptl.ac.in slash NOC slash NPTL semester. Just Google with the word call NPTL semester information, it will take you here. Now, if I want to see the timeline, you can see the timelines here, January 2024 timelines when the course will start, particularly the colleges or universities who are taking these courses for credit transfer, they can schedule their timelines so that they do not clash with the NPTL exam dates. Okay. Now here, Additionally, you can see here tentative course list. 
sorry not this one january 2024 if i see i'll be seeing a list of courses which are scheduled for offering they be new course or rerun courses some list is available this list will be periodically updated to include more courses but certain courses have already been decided they are available if your university is considering certain courses for credit transfer and that number is big and you feel that that num that course is not reflected here in the list you can alert us beforehand so that if required we'll be able to include that course which is required by the university for credit transfer in a particular semester okay so you have taken a look at the course you have taken a look at the say uh, timelines now you want to take a decision whether to go for a rerun course or new course and register or enroll into the course. If it is a rerun course, what all information you can get from the rerun course page? Say, I am considering a course on Python. And say, joy of computing using Python. This is the course I am going to prescribe for our students. What all information I'll be having from the course page just because it's a rerun. I can see from the downloads, one set of assignment is available here. So this will give a fair idea to the student what type of weekly assignment questions they are expected to face. Then comes transcripts. That is, as we said, these courses are transcript. The videos will be transcripted into English text. So we can see here, and in addition to the English verified text, we have got certain other languages, be it Hindi, Malayam, Kannada, Tamil, Telugu, all these languages, these contents are actually translated into different regional languages. They will be able to download this on a, say, uh, lecture basis, they can download it from here. Additionally, you can also see that there is a books link. That means all the contents, weekly contents have been actually clubbed into a book and this book is available into different other languages. You can, they can download this in whichever language these are available. What else is available here under the download section? You can download the videos also from here. Further, you can just look at the statistics how many times this course was offered and during each time how many students enrolled registered for the exam got a certification or successfully completed got 90 plus 75 to 89 and all this data this will give you a fair idea like what is the toughness level of the course to what extent the students in earlier operations could complete the course so based on that you can take a decision okay after all these steps, if you feel now you are ready to take an enrollment, visit swayam.gov.in portal. Here you can directly write Python or else you can select all courses. Click onto the all courses. It will list all the courses that are currently available in Swayam platform for enrollment. Now, if I am looking for an NPTEL course, I apply my NPTEL filter. These are based on the coordinators. I put my NPTEL filter. Then I can select, okay, based on the course duration and all. Otherwise, I can directly write, say, the joy of computing. It will show me the particular course, the joy of computing using Python. This here I find that okay, this course is from IIT Roper faculty, is under NPTEL, is a 12 weeks course. Enrollment starts on 31st July. Exam date is on 28th October. Exam registration closes on 18th August. So now I click onto the course card. I get into the course enrollment page. What all things I get? I get a two to five minutes video that will briefly say what is the say what faculty is going to teach in the course, what is the learning outcome, all this information will be available here. Then about the course, intended audience, prerequisites if any, and industry support. That is, which are the industries that will appreciate the knowledge of the course. 
Then the course layout on structure basis, the books and references, instructor biography, course certificate, all these data that we are talking about, everything will be available in this. So now, after going through this, if I am decided, okay, I'll be I want to join into the course, I'll click onto the join button. It will take me to the login page. I will be taking the path of my Google account. I'll be using my Gmail account. I select my Gmail. It will, from my Gmail account, it will collect certain data like my name, phone number, email ID, all these data will be collected directly from there. Then I can select my age group, gender, country currently I am deciding, my PIN code. Based on this, it will select the state, city. Then I have to select my profession, whether I'm a student, faculty, employed or other. There are four options under this. If you are student or faculty, definitely you are connected with some academic institution. In that case, the question comes, are you part of a Swayam local chapter? Select appropriately, if your college is a local chapter, select the college name from the drop-down menu under that particular state. Okay, then you select the qualification, current, the highest qualification, if you are, say, Say if you are pursuing your degree, that means the highest qualification is 10 plus 2, that you can say secondary or high secondary, whatever it is. Okay. Then year of graduation, you can select. Then the academic side is a part of the Swam local chapter. Say yes. If it is a local chapter, local chapter state, you select. If I select here, say Maharashtra, and from here, from I can select here Bharti College of Arts and Commerce or it is Bharti Vidya College of Engineering Pune, Bharti Vidya Pit Institute of Management. This is the institute. Then I put my college roll number, degree that we are pursuing, the department. There could be multiple departments spread across multiple institutions, but we have tried to provide a consulted list of the major disciplines that are available across the country. So just select the discipline that closely matches with your discipline. Okay. Then which is the study year? The first year, second year, third year, fourth year, all these things. Then click on to these check, two check boxes and join for the course. Immediately you will be alerted that you have joined into the course and I will be taken to the course page. Thank you for registering for the course. Click the announcement tab for important information. Now here, what I am meeting, I am getting, this is my course page, which I will be visiting during the entire runtime of the course. I will be getting the weekly videos here, like week zero, here it will be week one, week two, two, week 12. Under each week, there will be certain number of course videos, weekly assignment, supplement, study materials all these links will be available here okay then what all things are available further here you can see in the announcement sections whenever the weekly videos and assignments are released an announcement will be made here that will be visible to you not only that you'll also be getting a alert message in your account gmail account or whichever account that you have used about the course then ask a question. As we said, after going through the video, if you have got any doubt, you'll be interacting with the faculty through a forum. So this is a forum where you'll be posting your queries, which will be answered by the faculty. Okay. Additionally, what do you have? Every week, you have got 10 days time to submit the assignment. At once, the submission deadline closes. That is Monday to next week's Wednesday, 11.59 is the closer time. So 11.59 after that, you will be able to see your score out of 100 in that particular week's assignment here. Assignment score here is written, weekly name and your assignment score out of 100. If your college is actually allotting some faculty to act as a mentor, in that case, you'll be able to select your mentor from here and you'll be able to see the mentor's name from this point. Okay, all these things are available in the course enrollment or the course page. You have gone through the complete contents, completed the course, and 
before that you have taken a decision that okay i will be writing the exam so how do you register for the examination usually all enrolled candidates will be alerted on same the link for exam registration by nptel so this is the exam form that is exam form.nptel.ac.in you go to this portal and give appropriate responses to register for the exam and pay the required number required fees okay this was all about what nptel is how to enroll into the course before enrollment what all things you should see for rerun courses what is available to you and how to register for the exam through exam link provided by nptel now if i say that okay what are the benefits of these nptel courses first of all we if we like to see that what are the career options available for the students just consider the student either say they will be going for the higher studies or maybe going for the job market they some people may start their own say business entity but in all the cases usually the students always use some study materials they go to the library and all that nptel courses most of the courses are actually curriculum based so these are being taught by the best faculty members in country from the premier institutes which where they will be giving lot of stress on the fundamentals so the nptel contents if you follow as an additional reading materials this will give you a strong foundation on your different topics which will help you not only to get a better employment opportunity but also crack important exams like gate now there is always uh, a gap between what is taught in the academics and what is required by the skills required by the industry because the industry changes periodically the industrial scenario changes periodically depending on the newer developments okay and the university cannot cope up with that rapid change of uh, changes that takes place in the industry so there is always a gap now since nptel offers certain courses from the emerging areas there is a good opportunity for the learners to enroll into the courses and say learn newer skills which are required by the industry so they become job ready additionally for the job interview and all they will be requiring a better communication skill uh, you can say or in general you can say soft skill we do provide lot of courses from soft skill as well as build up on their language you can say confidence uh, they build up on the language so you offer certain courses from the language as well as from the soft skill so all this first first three will improve the students confidence to face interview competitive exam better additionally if they are starting their own business entity then there are new things that are required to be learned how to start a business what are the things that to be kept in mind how to prepare a project report how to manage the finances all these things are taught as part of the courses coming from the entrepreneurship we have got good number of courses that starts from beginners to the advanced level so they can take that and certificates that comes from iits or iics at the end of certification examination then improves the prospect of getting an internship or job once you show the certificate then definitely it improves your prospect the aict and ugc has given a mandate that okay you can also take these courses for credit transfer while aict approves up to 20% ugc has approved in a cbca structure up to 40% courses can be taken from uh, swayam linked nptel courses in addition to this many of the universities have adopted honors or minor degree program as per the say guidelines of aict okay that is if you do certain extra credits to swayam you earn a btech honors program or you get a minor degree many universities have actually accepted that now if you are planning to write the gate examination for better preparation you can not only say go through the contents which are available here but will show you that okay these contents are created uh, course wise and you may find it difficult sometimes that okay if i am looking for say mechanical engineering certain topics from a particular area which course i should i follow 
we have given you certain guidelines on that. We'll talk more about the gate examination portal in the coming slides. So it helps you to prepare better for the gate examination. Then for the faculty, they need to complete certain FBP points for the career advancement. And many of the courses of NPTEL are actually recognized as faculty development program courses as per our agreement with AICT. So after completion of those selected courses, they will be able to get a FTP point. The people, those who are in the industry or the employed people, they are required to upskill or reskill themselves periodically, at least once in five years to make them or keep them competitive in the job market. So since we are offering a lot of courses from the emerging areas, they can actually brush up their skills here. Just we'll look at the some of the statistics. You may feel that, okay, uh, people have got a scared scenario like, okay, these courses are coming from IIT, it must be very tough. Should I take these courses and all? Possibly these statistics will help you to understand who are the people, how many people are taking these courses. So as we said that during our 20 hours, 20 years journey, we have created 3000 unique courses, but many of these courses are offered in a rerun mode, semester after semester. So we have offered about 5,372 courses as of now with more than 2.3 crore people or learners enrolling into the course for learning purpose and more than 28.6 lakhs learners registering for the examination and 18.8 lakh plus getting a certification. This has been our journey during the last 20 years, not 20 years exactly, from 2014, the online certification program. What started with three courses with merely one lakh ex, uh, enrollment among about 3,000 people writing the exam. If we just look at the 2022, the last year, during the two semester, we offered 1,213 courses, which had more than 40 lakhs enrollment and more than 7.5 lakh exam registration. During the last semester alone, we offered 665 courses with enrollment count crossing 24 lakhs and exam registration higher than 5.16 lakhs. Currently, we are offering about 690 plus courses. Enrollment process is on. So if you are looking for the courses as part of the credit transfer or learning newer things or learning the courses that helps you to prepare better for the gate examination, without further delay join into the course and register for the examination. Now, unlike other online platforms which offer only popular courses, we are not restricting the courses where you have got more number of enrollments. We are also offering courses from niche areas like where you'll be having maybe only few students will be taking, particularly say researchers will be interested to take the courses. Since this program is funded by the ministry, we are without thinking about the commercial aspect, we are offering the courses which are catered to the needs of that, even those select group of learners also. So you can see where we are offering about close to 700 courses from the mechanical engineering, computer science 662, electrical and EC club together 668. Equally number is coming from the humanities, social science, management, civil. So you have got complete spectrum of the courses coming from law, health sciences, basic sciences, engineering, all branches available. So if you are joining, if you are coming to the SOIM NPTEL portal, you'll possibly find some or other course that interest you. Even a course like uh, appreciating Carnatic music was taken by many of the senior people, be it in the academics or you can say uh, not employed in that sense. Okay. We are offering courses from, say, German, uh, language courses on Japanese. So you can actually learn many things from here and you'll find some or other interesting course that may be useful for you. Exam percentage, if you attendance percentage, you, if you see, it is consistently around 85 to 90 percent. Pass percentage, it used to be 85 to 90 percent earlier, but with the change in our uh, says origin policy or certification policy, this number has taken a dip. Uh, currently, we are saying that, okay, for certification, 40% individual score 
in assignment and final examination is mandatory. Okay, so it stands sometimes uh, is around 65 to 70 percent currently. Exam registration, if you see the statistics wise, it has been consistent since beginning 40 female versus 60 male. That's a very good figure considering the spread of such students in our engineering curricula also. The reasons for taking the courses, we, we continuously take the feedback from the learners why they are taking the courses. While most of the people you can find, they are taking the courses maybe for the grade transfer, some are taking to update their knowledge in this particular field or getting a placement or internship opportunity. Some are taking these courses for the research purpose, some for uh, better preparation in the competitive exam and so on. If you see the top 20 courses where we had enrollment and exam registration very high, it includes the courses which are on Java, Python, maybe data science, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, such courses, plus equally good number of people are registering enrolling and registering for the soft skill courses. Now, the major challenge before us is that people are registering in the exam and we get the data of number of exam registration at a very late stage. And conducting the exam on a pan-India basis with 5 lakh people registering for exam in a semester is very tough job because you have to book the exam registration centers much ahead of time. And since we do not get hardly, we get not more than a month's time to decide on the exam centers, it becomes difficult sometimes to offer an exam center closer to the place of the student. Sometimes they have to move far off or sometimes we find it difficult to say accommodate those many students within a particular date. So we go for additional exam dates. In this also we have said that exam registration, say exam is on 28th and 29th October, but we may go for certain additional exam dates for certain cities. So if your college is looking for exam registration, do alert us on the numbers so that we are better equipped to keep the, or make the arrangement better in a particular city. As we said that uh, we are utilizing the services of the prime minister research fellow scholars. So they are taking live session live interactive session where the students can join and directly ask the doubts where the PMR scholars will be helping the students to understand how to solve problems. Since theories are part of the lecture, problems are part of the assignment. So these sessions will definitely ask the students to join in more and more numbers. You see, we are actually including more and more courses for this support. And if you take this support, you will be benefited. If you can't join into the course on a live mode, at least go through the recorded versions which are made available for the learner so that you know in the final exam, if some numerical problems are being asked, you'll be able to solve that. Okay, so these sessions are conducted on from Friday to Tuesday every week from the course start date. Session timings are specified and announced much before that. The recorded sessions are available to the learners so that if you do not, could not attend the session live, you are able to view the lectures later on. And the feedback that we get from the learners who have best use of this is that it was fantastic. If you see the number of the course wise, the feedback that we have uh, received that they say that it was extremely beneficial. They could learn many things from the PMRF scholars. Now comes we from say 2003 to 2023, we have seen that students are taking courses without uh, keeping a focus on that. They take courses from XYZ scattered with. Now just to give a directed path of learning, if they are looking for a career in a particular orientation, particular direction, or maybe want to pursue higher studies in a particular area, in that case, it is essential that they develop a lot of expertise or good understanding on that particular area. So considering that, we have created a domain scholarship program, domain NPTEL domain certification program, in which we have specified certain courses 
if they do certain courses from that particular area, they can say they have got good understanding of that particular area. We'll see more details about it in the next slide. Then based on the students who are enrolled into the course who have been with us in NPTEL consistently over say not only one semester but over the years based on their attachment and the number of courses they are doing and the performance we actually rate these students as NPTEL stars in different categories either whether they are superstars, evangelists, motivated learners, enthusiasts, discipline stars or believers. Say if a student has actually enrolled in four to six courses in a semester and write the exam in that, and if they are topper in at least three courses, then we call them NPTEL superstars. Similar criteria exist for other categories. So based on your association with NPTEL and based on your number of exams, performance in the exam, we rate the students as NPTEL stars. Uh, I think there is some question uh, by Professor Neeraj, a remote session software the course. Sir, I couldn't understand uh, your question. Can you just uh, explain a bit little? You said that remote sensing a software ka course karte hai. Sir, you can go to uh, nptl.ac.in portal and search whether that course is any course is available on remote sensing to the best of my understanding. We have got certain courses. Whether that course is available for enrollment during July or not, that you can check it from the list that I have shown. Go to nptl.ac.in portal, scroll down, course list is there, just click there and there is an Excel sheet check from there whether remote sensing course is available or not because we have created more than 3000 courses. It's difficult to remember whether that course is there or not and whether that is available for enrollment at this point or not. Okay, sir. Now the domain domains that we talk about, we said that we give a focused direction so that the students can get a deeper understanding of that particular area. They get expertise. So what are these? We have got 12 disciplines we have identified and currently we are offering 51 domains. We have identified 51 domains from different branches of engineering and humanities, social science, management, all these areas. In each domain, you have got certain core courses and a few elective courses. Total duration of learning is mentioned. So 60 weeks, 70 weeks of learning is to be completed. So if you complete the core and elective courses within a period of three years with an average score of 60 in NPTEL, if you get 40% marks, you get a certificate. But for domain certification, the bar is little raised so that at least you should get 55 in each and average score should not be less than 60. And the completion type of time for all, say, uh, core and electric courses should, should not exceed beyond three years time. If you complete that, then you will be getting a NPTEL domain certificate. What are the domains available? Aerospace, biotechnology, chemical faculty, better we go to nptel.ac.in slash domain. This is the domain certification page. You can see there is a video. You can domain, you can browse that. Okay, which are the aerospace, you have got flight mechanics, Biotechnology, bioprocess, bioengineering, biosciences, computational, uh, computational biology, chemical engineering, you have got five disciplines, civil engineering, computer science, electrical and electronics together. Then you have got faculty disciplines for the fundamental and advanced domains, humanities, social science, you have got English studies, psychology, management, you have got quite a good number of disciplines, mathematics, mechanical engineering, metallurgy, and material science. So these all available under each thing. See, if I am looking for robotics domain, it says that I have to complete 50 weeks of learning. There are two core courses out of the, which are the specified core courses and whether these courses core courses available for enrollment at this point or not, that is also mentioned. So here, 
if it is available it will be marked here that okay you can enroll into the course through this link okay similarly you find here this is four courses then you have got you have to complete five elective courses what are type of elective courses that also it is mentioned and which the course is currently available for enrollment that is also marked here Now, if you want to see like who are the domain scholars, that also you will be able to see from here. See, these are January to uh, April 2023. We had 158 domain scholars and these scholars are uh, some are faculty, some are definitely students. Like here, uh, there is a student so it's a mix of faculty, student, and industry professionals. Okay. You'll be able to see the complete statistics from the NPTEL domain certification page. This is how a sample domain certification certificate looks like. It will bear the same data what is available in your certificate, but all certificate data will be merged together. So in one page, you will have a photograph name and the domain that you have got and the courses that you have actually completed and their performance in that with the individual QR score. Number of domains completed, if you see that, okay, one domain has been completed by 571 scholars, while there are scholars who have done more than one domains. So there are 32 students or learners who have completed two domains and there are four scholars who have completed three domains. Now, this is a new initiative that NPTEL has now permitted or taken an in principle decision that NPTEL learners who are actually star learners can take on campus courses in a semester. That is, they come to the NP IIT Madras, take the course along with the regular students, and they will be given a transcript for that. They have to pay 1000 rupees per credit. Okay. We will be providing further details on this through our local chapters. The most popular courses, we say that we are offering 690 courses, but some of these courses are very popular and are of real value to the industry. So which are the courses that from our experience or from the data that we collect, we find there are these are the courses like Python, renewable energy, electric vehicles, data science, cloud computing, industry 4.0, blockchain, design thing, Six Sigma, and such courses are very popular uh amongst the industry for job opportunities now if you just look at the what are the initiative that we have taken is one initiative that has been taken by the ugc cac but we are trying to implement it by reaching out to the colleges okay like this college is currently taking the initiative to conduct the uh say awareness program so whatever recognition has been given or whatever approval has been take, given we tell colleges how they can implement it now what is this credit transfer they say that okay you can take 40 percent of the credits now each course has got a credit nptl mentions in the certificate that 10 hour 20 hours and 30 hour courses are equivalent to one two or three credits one two and three credits respectively but this is the recommendation of from nptl the academic council of the institute can take a judicious decision to decide whether this three credit, what is specified by NPTEL for 30 hour course is to be taken as three credit or four or five credits, depending on their decision. It's purely the decision of the academic council. So they can first identify which are the courses that they wish to take from NPTEL. Then what should be the credit equivalency? NPTEL says three, we may say four or five, whatever it is, mention that. And publish the list of the courses for the students to take the courses. What we recommend is that you may avoid, say, recommending the NPTEL courses for the final semester students, particularly uh, in view of the fact that if the students do not do well in the course, that should not jeopardize their internship or job timelines, since NPTEL will not be conducting any supplementary exam for that. So another recommendation is that the students after their secondary, high secondary or 
senior secondary they are coming in a very new environment in that case it is essential that they will take some time to settle down in the uh, program in a college so if you just avoid giving the say online certification program for the first year students first semester student that may be problematic so once they settle down in the first semester maybe from the second semester you can ask them to take something courses which are primarily on the english or soft skill courses maybe four weeks or eight weeks course so that they can comfortably do the course and also learn the steps that they have to follow on a weekly basis then from the third semester onwards you can actually allocate skill based courses okay and also we would say that okay if possible encourage them to do at least one domain certificate within the next four, say eight semesters within eight semester they should be encouraged to complete one domain which will help them to get deeper understanding of a particular area then we have tied up with aict as part of that many of the courses of nptel are recognized as fdp course but it's as we said the course may be marked as fdp in the course page in the course page once you go to the swayam portal you will find in this it will be written in the what is marked in the red boxes this is an aict approved fdp course this course is not only open for the faculty but also open for anyone only the faculty if they attend the course they will be getting additional fdp certificate if they wish to okay so what is the criteria they will be enrolling into the course then after an enrollment they will be writing the exam once they successfully complete this they have to apply separately for the fdp certificate by paying a token fee of 100 rupees this is how a sample fdp certificate looks like the equivalency of fdp points is marked as that four weeks course is equivalent to half fdp of one week eight weeks is considered as full fdp of one week and a 12 week course will be considered as one and half fdp during each semester you can see the number of faculty members who are completing the courses this time say uh, last semester we offered about say 665 courses out of that 561 courses were fdp courses similarly here out of 690 you will be having around 500 class courses which are fdp courses the faculty members can take benefit of that the participation of the faculties in the enrollment or exam registration has been consistently around 20% over the years you can see 17 to 20% except on certain time when we had the covid hitting the uh, scenario now the spos is the single point of contact for the faculty from the local chapter college who is interacting with nptel plays the most most pivotal role in success of this program in their institution so what we do we support the spocs uh in their career advancement if they have actually going to attend a conference in which maybe one of their paper has been accepted and the conference is conducted in certain designated institute which are the institutes it can be iits nits iiscrs and certain other institutes or t4e conference held anywhere if they attend that conference in that case they can apply beforehand with all the documents and amount up to 25000 is reimbursed to the students on completion of the conference this amount is reimbursed towards the travel expenses registration fee accommodation related expenses and all okay so for the first 10 days of the month the portal remains open when you can actually apply only thing ensure that the you know, conference is conducted in the designated institutions what is mentioned in the portal okay if you are not utilizing this benefit if you have any faculty in your institute who is taking interest in nptel activities but is also attending a conference where his paper has been accepted the he or she may also be encouraged to apply for this then we have got gate portal as we said that if some of the students are interested for say 
taking the great exam either for joining master's program elsewhere or they want to get an opportunity in say PSUs where job opportunities are now linked with the gate, gate performance, you can definitely explore the features that are available in the gate portal. What are the avail, uh, features available? First thing, let us go to the gate portal. Here you will find gate preparation platform. It has got many options like gate syllabus mapping. So if you are from say mechanical engineering, and you want to write gate exam, you want to take the help of say supplementary study methods. NPTEL video lectures are one of them. So in this case, say I am looking for thermodynamics course. I want to get a deeper understanding of the thermodynamics course. In that case, if I select the topic thermodynamics, the NPTEL will link here, the link is provided to different video lectures in one place where this topic has been discussed. So you don't have to look for many courses, okay, whether this course is useful for me or not. NPTEL has already actually marked certain courses which you can refer for getting deeper understanding of the particular topic. Okay. What else is available here? Now, before the exam, we always refer to the previous exam papers. Okay, just to check our say, preparation level. So, what we do here, in this case, you can find here video solution. Under this section, different video based solution, how to solve that particular problem has been posted. So, you have got video based solution, say, if you are from mechanical engineering, you select, you can select either on a year basis or from topic basis. If you select on the topic basis, maybe heat transfer, then different questions that was asked on heat transfer, these video solutions have been given to give you understanding like, okay, if this was the problem, how to solve that type of problem. What else? Options are available here. You have got we get practice test. That is, before the exam, any exam, we try to attain mock interview, mock test. The same feature is available here. On a particular date, you can actually come and write the exam, which is of three hours duration. And at the end of that, you will get a score. So number of cases have been created where you can actually take regular mock test here. In addition to all these facilities, you have got live mentoring sessions also where your doubt clearings can be done by the experts, particularly the PMRF scholars can chip in and help you understand certain topics which are relevant for your gate examination. So whatever is required to prepare better for the examination, NPTEL has taken a holistic view of that and providing everything in a particular platform. Do explore for your betterment. Then NPTEL Plus. Now we say that, okay, we are offering the courses in January and July, starting from January, ending in April, starting in July, ending by October. But if you want a certificate in between, say you come and once you close the enrollment, at that point, you will have to wait for the next semester. But you want a certificate to be getting, you want to get at the earliest. Many of the online platforms, it has been seen that okay, they are utilizing the NPTEL courses and creating their own certification program and charging everything. So NPTEL Plus platform has been created, which is an add-on to the NPTEL platform. That is, whatever is being offered in NPTEL, that flexibility has been enhanced here. There we were offering curriculum-based courses, but here, in addition to the curriculum-based courses, we are also offering certain skill-based courses which are not only offered by faculty members from say IITs or IASC or academic institution, but also from the industry. So it's not linked to say Senate approved courses. These are wide open courses. And here you can take the courses whenever you want. That is if I want to take the course today and complete the course within say next 10 days, I'll be able to do that. So NPTEL Plus is a platform where you can do courses whenever you want, because we see in industry, many of the people from the industry, they take these courses on their own. Or in sometimes many of the industries have tied up with us 
to train their resources and they may not have 12 weeks time to complete a course. So for the benefit of those targeted learners, NPTEL Plus platform provides an opportunity to take the course and write the certification exam as and when you desire it. But yes, it comes with a comes with a cost. That is, if you want to enroll into the course for learning purpose in NPTEL, you don't pay anything. But here, a token amount is charged. Similarly, for writing the examination, that charge is little higher on NPTEL Plus because we'll be organizing the examination dedicatedly for you. Okay. So the basic distinction between NPTEL and NPTEL Plus is that these are not very structured courses like four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks. It could be, say, NPTEL courses, a 12 week course, you can take it within a week's time if you feel so. You have got certain, say, workshops, some expertise on, say, uh, something on specific tools. Okay, a special training on certain tools, certain softwares, all these programs are part of NPTEL Plus. And the duration of these programs can be from, say, as low as few weeks, few hours to few months. Okay. Another opportunity for the NPTEL students, the students who are doing well in the NPTEL is an internship opportunity. Now we understand that internship is an extremely valuable proposition uh, for the learners, for getting a job opportunity and all that gives hands-on experience to many things. So internship opportunities are arranged for the NPTEL course stoppers by our office. If your course stopper, in that case, the steps are like this. Once the results are declared and we see that, okay, there are course stoppers, we approach the faculty, course faculty, get a consent from the faculty on taking interns under them. Then we approach the course stopper saying that if you are willing to undergo course training under that same faculty in IITs or IASCs or other institutions that are offering the course, in that case, give your willingness by submitting your resume, statement of purpose, what you want intend to do during the internship and your last two semester grade cards if you have. Based on all this data, the faculty will see whether you fit into the internship program or not. Sometimes it requires that, okay, you want to do something, you have interest on something, but the faculty has got an opportunity to expose you on certain area. So there is a project and mismatch problem is there. So that may not actually result in internship. So based on your interest and the interest of the faculty who is giving the internship, certain students are selected who will be going to the institute other institute, say IITs, IAC, or any other institute that is offering the internship, they'll stay for a period of four to eight weeks, or in some cases, 12 weeks, interact with the faculty and the research scholars there, learn newer things, and at the end, they get a certificate on completion of the internship. We also pay them a token stipend of 5,000 rupees per four weeks of training to recover their, to partially support their lodging and boarding expenses. Because once you are going in an IIT, you have to bear the cost of your staying there and uh, lodging and boarding expenses. Sometimes we definitely try to help you to get hostel accommodation, but sometimes it may not be feasible also. In that case, you should be willing to take uh, you can say, make your own arrangement of stay outside the institute. Okay, because uh, many of the times, like in July, uh, the semester in IIT system starts sometimes in the, say, 13th, 14th, next, uh, second week of July. Okay, whereas some of the internship programs will be going beyond that. So once the students of IITs are back in the campus, so hostel accommodation is not available. During that phase, Either the students have to make their own arrangement, otherwise internship will be difficult to do in an offline mode. Yes, we do consider certain online programs also based on uh, the nature of 
force, nature of work and all. Then we have also tied up with uh, our partner, industry partner, Texas Instruments. Uh, the people who are from the electrical electronics domain, they know that Texas Instruments is a giant in the, you can say, cheap industry, semiconductor industry. They provide an internship opportunity for the students if they complete certain courses within a certain semester, like basic electrical circuits and analog circuit or IC design, analog IC design. Additionally, if you have completed certain other courses like circuit analysis for analog designers, introduction to time bearing electrical networks, PLL for power management integrated circuits. In that case, you get a preference over others in getting the TI internship program. For getting a job, it's not only the domain knowledge that matters. The students who are aspiring to get a job opportunity, first they need to know how to prepare a resume properly, how to search for the jobs, how to present themselves before the interview panel, their body language, their communication skill, all these plays equally important role as that of uh, your uh, domain knowledge. So just to help the students in their holistic development, what we are providing, we are soft, providing soft skill training for the NPTEL local chapter students. If you have got about 30, 40 students who are interested to take the say soft skill training from us, do write back to us. We have got dedicated team of trainers who will be conducting either one week or two weeks training covering your employment assessment, interactive session will be there to tell you what are your shortcomings, what are the points where you need to improve on that. Then there will be online mock interviews, like what are the say general questions that are asked, how to answer better in that questions. Okay, so this type of sessions are conducted over a period of one week or two weeks based on the request coming from the local chapter college. We try to see that the students must have at least taken one NPTEL course and accordingly they are given soft skill training. Okay. The impact of soft skill training has been extremely good as per the feedback we received from the students who have undergone how that has actually helped them to, uh, we can say, prepare better for the interview, present themselves before the interviewer. So these all data are available in our social media handles. If you just go through that, what we do on a regular basis and what feedback we receive from the learners is all provided there. Then we are also interacting with our industry partners, what we call NPTEL Industry Associate. We know that many of the learners are from the industry as well as many of the faculty many of the uh, you can see industry bodies have actually associated with nptl in course development as well as to provide uh, say what goes on in the industry what do they expect from the new learners from the leadership talk different lecture sessions are conducted by the uh, industry associates or the people from the industry that is they not only join for jointly offering the course, providing inputs on the course structure, but also provide support to the students in the form of technical or leadership talks. We'll see that CSR, you must be, uh, many of the local chapter colleges must be aware of the fee waiver scheme for the needy student. That also comes from the NPTEL industry associates. Okay, we are tying up with about 87 industries currently. Uh, these industries are not only from the government sector, but also from diverse disciplines of private sectors, be it IT, oil and energy, power transmission generation, research and development, consumer electronics, from all domains, you have got industries. And we are conducting, as we said, we are conducting live session to give uh, what is needed, how to prepare better for the job. All this preparation, these lectures are delivered by the uh, experts from the industries who periodically conduct such things. And these videos are also available. Another important contribution comes from the industry partner is through the CSR initiative. We try to provide uh, what is called your fee waiver to the needy students through 
the csr fund support provided by few of the industry partners and some individuals okay whatever fund we get if the student is needy many of the students we find that they are maybe first time first generation learner but they are very needy uh, maybe they are from say rickshaw pullers their parents are uh, not in a regular employment but they are interested and they want to develop their skill if the local chapter college recommends their name to us we provide a few waiver to the extent of 50% that is they pay the full amount write the exam and if they are successfully completing the course we refund their 50% from the csr fund that is provided by our industry partners okay and if you see that how the students are benefiting out of this you can see number of beneficiaries so far has been 1.4 lakhs plus students have actually benefited particularly from the tier 2 tier 3 cities uh here also if we uh, that the spread is across the india from which state how many students are getting the benefit and out of it and what they say about the uh, this particular benefit by the learners translation is an initiative just to help the students who might have not studied in english medium school so for them what we do as i have shown in the previous slide also for a read and course if you go to the portal you will find under the download section you will be able to download individual lectures in different regional languages or the complete book format is available in a particular language so that for that purpose we seek your help if you are teaching a particular course or if you have got expertise on a particular area in which nptel is seeking in say translation activity in that case even if you have got good say if to our your local regional language you can definitely write to us and help us in this uh, translation activity we are currently handling say 223 courses have been translated into different languages this is a paid service if you have got only criteria is that if you have got depth of your particular areas which which course you want to translate into regional language and if you have a good uh, you can say um, depth on your particular language also translation details we are actually we are handling this many languages assam is bengali gujarati hindi kannada malayalam marathi odia punjabi tamil and telugu so if you have got good competency on any of these languages and the particular course do write back us to us so that you can be part of this translation activity we are available in all social media handles and you have got number of followers you can see whether it's a linkedin instagram twitter facebook youtube all success stories what all we do we provide it there do join us to get regular updates not only from our side but also the viewers or the course takers what they have to say how they have benefited their success stories you can see there the mptel starts just we recognize their effort and do provide some sort of a memento which they proudly display Uh, as NPTEL stars, we also carry out uh, or organize laboratory workshops periodically on certain topics. Okay, uh, maybe that course, that type of laboratory is not available to your institution. Uh, these are usually of seven days program. Ah, uh, in this, maybe the first five days there will be having theory and laboratory session in the morning and afternoon. So morning. Say nine o'clock to five o'clock or six o'clock, they will be working in the laboratory, undergoing the theory, maybe visiting few other laboratories in the institute. That is, this is a one in-person base. That is, they will be going to a particular institute and ex getting an exposure in the different laboratory activities. And the end day, last day, they will be having an examination. On completion of that, they will be given a certificate. What is the charge? We charge a token amount of two hundred rupees. is for this workshop and the students have to bear the accommodation and food expenses while they stay in the particular institution the local chapters has been extremely supportive because we reach out to the learners through the local chapters only okay so like this program is being conducted by one of the local chapter so based on the performance of the local chapter students 
we recognize the local chapters uh, and felicitate them during the workshops. Top 100 local chapters are felicitated. Not all local chapters participate equally. First, we say that if there are 25 students writing the exam from your college, and out of that, if at least 50% clear the exam, we say this is a uh, active local chapter. Okay. In addition to about 5,500 local chapters, what is available within the country, we are currently having about 48 local chapters outside India also. And local chapter participation has been consistently above 70, uh, currently stands very close to 90%. This is what the data says that percentage of uh, participation from different state local chapters, state-wide enrollment and exam registration data. The suggestion for the local chapter, as we said, that not to give a uh, math-based course or maybe a skill-based course in the very beginning. Maybe you can offer first soft skill or English language courses, then slowly build up on the programming and skill-based courses. You can encourage your students to make better use of the gate portal. And if you have got any suggestion, you are most welcome to uh, revert to us. Initially, you can suggest uh, the students to take rerun courses so that they have idea about what is there in the video and they have an exposure on the one set of assignments. Provide mentoring support to the students so that they have someone in the college as the first level of escalation point. If they have any difficulty, they will be escalating to them. And maybe the faculty would suggest that they should encourage the students to write more on the forum because it's an anonymous forum. They will be learning how to express themselves. Once they go out of the, say, uh, beyond four years tenure, they'll be joining in the industry. They have to say whatever problems they have, they will be mainly communicating with their bosses through email. So they need to know what is the problem they are facing right now. They should be able to say, write that in forum. So they should be encouraged in that respect. And if your college is taking the courses for aid transfer, do allocate some time for maybe a group study uh, in the syllabus or ensure that you do not put or schedule any exam or any activity on the NPTEL exam date. If the faculties are enrolling into the course to support the students as mentor, based on the performance of the students that they are mentoring, the NPTEL will be giving a mentoring certificate to the faculties. They need to get 10 mentoring points, which is based on the performance. Like if they successfully completed certain points are given, but if they are getting a gold, say elite gold, that is 90 plus or post stopper, in that case, their points are more. So based on how the performance, what is the performance of the student, the mentors will be getting either a normal mentor certificate or top performing mentor certificate. As we said, we are available in different social media handles. We also provide all feedbacks on to NPTEL stars feedback channel, uh, what NPTEL uh, regularly receives from the learners. You are most welcome to visit and uh, see this thing. I'll just take two slides uh, to brief you on the new initiative taken by IIT Madras uh, in the front of, say, a revolutionary uh, concept of off-campus BS degree program, primarily on two disciplines of electronic systems and data science and applications. Before I go ahead further, if you have got any doubt on what we discussed today, you are most welcome to uh, post it into the YouTube uh, chat box so that as soon as I complete the next two slides, I'll be able to take the questions in that. So this is BS program where enrollment is not linked to the JE advanced. So if someone is doing a BS BTEC program or BSc BCom program in any of the institution, if then they want to pursue a second degree from IIT Madras, in that case, they can join into this. The joining is not through JE advanced, but through a separate qualifier process. If you enroll into the, say, qualifier process exam, in that case, you'll be given a four weeks content. You go through the contents, periodically submit your assignments, and at the end, write a certification. And right at the end, there will be an examination. 
if you qualify in that if you get a minimum marks in that you will be admitted into the main program the main program is of four weeks to four years duration but you can take it in a flexible mode because we understand there could be many people who are taking this course from where they are pursuing a second degree on a regular degree from any other institution or they are employed or their faculty in that case they can actually take it in a slow pace the four weeks four years course can be taken over a period of eight years additionally if they want they can quit at any point and get that certificate valid for that particular level it has got four levels for data science program that is it is first level is your foundation level second is diploma third is bsc fourth is bs so if you want to complete only second year and quit you can get a diploma and quit that be a diploma comes from iit madras okay similarly for the data science there are three levels first is your foundation level second is your um, uh, diploma level and there is no bsc level only at the fourth year bs level is there the bs degree is considered as equivalent to btech degree normal degree of iit madras and they will be recognized as an alumni of iit madras the placement and uh, internship facilities are available to the uh, students of this program after certain level so this, there is no age limit to join into this program and for joining into the data science program the requirement is that you should have at the 10th level english and maths and for the electronic system you need to have physics and maths at the 10 plus 2 level so qualifier four weeks contain you pass the qualifier exam and join into the main program and you may quit at any of these level that is foundation diploma or degree whichever way you feel like these are the tentative fee structures the flexibility here is that you don't have to pay the fee upfront if you are taking two courses you pay only for the two courses the depending on how many courses you are taking in a semester you pay only for that amount okay this is for one year uh, the opportunities that are available for data science and electronic systems are given at the bottom if you are looking for any of the opportunities you can think of it so irrespective of science arts commerce law any degree they can pursue the data science and application program but for the electronic system that requires an additional component like after every semester they have to physically come to iit madras for the laboratory session that requires your science background at the 10 plus 2 level they will also be the students will also be coming to iit madras for interaction with the faculties and other activities that are done by the in campus students with this i'll stop my presentation uh, thank you for being with me for the last uh, more than one hour more, almost going to be uh, one hour 45 minutes with this i stop and if there are any questions i'll be happy to take the question over to you uh, sir uh, thank you Thimsankar, sir you have covered almost all aspects of nptl being a local chapter uh, I, I thank you for giving uh, what you can say la uh, very very large time to exploring all the things. Now, uh, as per the schedule, I am going to uh, cover the impact of local chapter as uh, as an institute. We are having the active local chapter. So let me share the screen first. There is madam, the screen is visible. Yes, sir, it is visible. So we have started our local chapter uh, in December 2019 under the leadership of our director, Dr. Rajesh Kanthesar. And till today, uh, as far as enrollment in NPTL is concerned, we are having around 1,800 total enrollment of the students. 
Now, as far as NEP implementation in Bharti Vidyapit deemed University Pune, and according to the guidelines, the students are enrolling for the examination for the credit transfer. As the credit transfer policy of NPTEL is comparatively simple, as the credit is directly transferred to the students in their ABC account, so students are getting motivated to enroll for the examination for easier, easier credit transfer. Till today, we are having the received certificate 58, the students who has passed for the examination. And we are having the concept of mentorship. That means uh, mentors are uh, allotted uh, and in their guidance, the mentees are performing whatever the progress of the assignments are. So total mentorship certificate received uh, according to the criteria of NPTEL till today it is four. Our faculties are encouraged to attain the course of NPTEL and getting the certificate of faculty development. So till today we have received 11 faculty development certificate. We have received twice spoke appreciation certificate from the NPTEL and from this semester, uh, from the last uh, July, sorry, Jan, April 2023, the, our local chapter is rated as active local chapter. And we have received the email from IIT Bombay for the felicitation workshop on 15th July. So this is the achievement being local chapter. Now, the feedback we received from our students. So here you can observe the feedback from our students. These are the students basically, which are having uh, two years course of MCA here. And we are also promoting the students of management to get the course from management discipline from NPTEL for easier credit transfer uh, as far as MOOC courses are concerned. Now our faculty members, as I discussed, they are encouraged for uh, participation for faculty development program for upskilling up their knowledge. So one of our faculty has achieved seven times FDP and they scored in top 5% performance of the NPTEL. One more faculty sees continuously uh, involved in promotion of MOOC and motivating the students to adopt MOOC courses for their uh, skill enhancement. So this time our center has two toppers as far as programming in Java is concerned and we are having the feedback from the toppers also and that has to be said to NPTEL too. Hello, my name is Mansi Tarasha, and I'm here to share my incredible journey in NPTEL's learning programs, Programming in Java course. It was an enriching experience, and I'm honored to have achieved the Silver Plus Elite certificate by securing the top position in the examination. From the very beginning, I was eager to enhance my skills in Java. Currently, I study at Bharti Vidyapit Institute of Management, Kolhapur which is a local chapter of NPTEL, where I got to know about NPTEL learning program and I found it as an opportunity that I couldn't miss up. The course was designed and taught by esteemed faculty members from the prestigious IITs and their expertise in the subject matter is truly exceptional. Throughout the course, I delved into the concepts of Java to video lectures. They explain various concepts in, uh, in the way that is understandable for learners like me. One of the highlights of the course was the weekly assignments that challenged me to apply all the knowledge that I have acquired. This assignment not only tested my understanding, but also sharpened my problem solving skills. Also, there was a forum where I could clear all of my doubts whenever needed. The journey was not with its were not without its fair share of challenges, but I was determined to overcome it. Lastly, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the NPTEL team, the faculty members, members of the course, and everyone involved in making this program successful. Thank you. 
So this was from our side, as far as the impact of NPTEL is concerned, we are creating again the motivating environment for the students as well as faculty members for the encouraging to adopt the MOOC courses as far as the guidelines of NEP is concerned. So moving ahead, uh, we will accept certain questions and we will say to you, sir, So, participants who are uh, connected through YouTube, they can share their questions if you are having, and you are requested to the faculty members, you are requested to uh, fill the feedback form so that you will receive the participation certificate. The feedback form is shared in the uh, live chat section. So, one of the participants, uh, Suvarna Patil has asked, please guide us regarding the fee waiver scheme at NPTEL. Sir. Yes, uh, I think you can stop presentation, sir. Yes. Uh, for the fee waiver, the condition is that the faculty uh, from the college or the administration of the college has to take a judicious decision, check the uh, whether the student really needs fee waiver or not check the documents and recommend the name of the students to NPTEL for consideration. So the first documents are to be verified by the faculty. Then a letter from the NPTEL, uh, sorry, uh, local chapter college has to be forwarded within the timeline. There is a timeline given every semester you have to apply for that. Initially, we'll just go through your recommendation. And if you have the fund, currently we don't have any issue with the fund based on the fund availability will approve it. Student will write the exam by paying the fee. Once they successfully complete the exam, then in the cases where we have approved the fee waiver, we will be refunding 50% of the fee waiver amount to the student account or if the college has collected the fee and provided in bulk to the yes. NPTEL, in that case, college will be refunded that one. So NPTEL will refund the amount to the college. Okay, sir. Uh, one more faculty members, I hope. Dr. Pallavi Jam Sandekar has asked, does NPTEL stars get a scholarship or not? NPTEL stars? No, there is no financial scholarship as such, but we are exploring how we can actually provide some sort of internship or other opportunity for the star learners. Okay, but as such, there is no scholarship, financial scholarship to the NPTEL stars. There is no financial benefit as such. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, one more question has been asked by one of the participants, B. Satya Narayana. Can you uh, clarify the credit transfer policy? See, uh, some uh, participants have the same queries. Uh, they have even personally uh, messaged to me. That what happens, sir, if we consider the enrollment of the student is 100 and let it be 70 students are writing for the examination and out of that 50 students get passed and the credit is transferred into their account. But uh, let it be 20 or 25 students, they have not scored, they did not get passed in the examination, but they have scored well in the assignments. Does any policy, uh, maybe from the NPTEL side or uh, from any other colleges that the colleges can implement for the easier implementation of credit transfer? Let me tell you uh, why this policy of 40% individual score in assignment and final exam was implemented at all. Because initially this policy was not there. Later on, we checked and found that there are many students who are getting 100 out of 100 in the assignment stage. But once the similar exams, which are asked in the assignment stage, if similar exams are asked in the final exam, they can't solve that. So that indicates that possibly the students have not done the assignment problems fully themselves. They might have taken the support of other students. If you just, if you, any of the faculty members who have done the NPTEL courses, just take a feedback from them. A part of the final exam is aligned with the assignment type of question. 
So if the student has got at least 40-50% marks in the assignment stage, there is no reason why the same student should be failing, provided the mentor has not solved the problem for them. But maybe, okay, mentor, the role of mentor is to, if they do not understand certain concept, let them understand, but let them solve the problem themselves, break their head and solve it themselves. Now, next comes, even after that, if they fail in the final certification, what happens? There are a few universities, since we do not conduct any supplementary exam, there are a few universities, uh, I don't remember at the point of time, they have a policy like they will conduct the exam parallelly within their institute itself. If it is an autonomous institution, it becomes easy. But for certain universities, I think that is based in Maharashtra only. Uh, I was talking other day. They said that, okay, if they fail in the NPTEL exam, then they can take the internal exam and clear, get the certificate. That is also possible. Other cases, there are a few universities, they have taken the path also. In case, say, the students are unsuccessful, now, if any of the faculty members is part of the course as a mentor, then he or she has got access to all assignment questions. Possibly they will be able to create a question paper based on that, since they know that subject. And they can conduct an exam at the local level and maybe that marks can be taken for the grading. Okay, sir. Uh... Now, I hope questions are not pending. Alaskar, sir, if you. Dr. Alaskar, sir. Sir, you're muted. So moving, moving ahead, there are no any questions and answers, sir. You have basically covered all aspects of NPTEL today. So uh, moving ahead, to propose word of thanks, I'll request Dr. Dipali Gala, madam, to propose word of thanks. Please come. Thank you so much, sir. Good morning, all. Today, I feel incredibly honored and privileged to have been allowed to extend this word of thanks. On behalf of our college, Bharti Vidya Peet, deemed to be University Institute of Management, Kulhapur, I sincerely thank today's guest of honor and speaker, Professor Siv Shankar Das, sir, for providing us with the extensive knowledge towards the NPTEL course. I also extend my sincere thanks to all the members of the team, IIT Bombay and Madras, for their active participation in conducting this workshop. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Shivaji Rao Kadam, sir, Chancellor, Dr. Vivek Shauji, sir, Vice Chairman, Dr. Vishwajit Kadam, sir, the Pro, the pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Sachin Varnekar, sir, the Dean, BVDU Pune, Dr. Kirti Gupta, ma'am, IQSC cell. Dr. Rajesh Kanthe, Director, Institute of Management, Kulhapur, to provide all the needed guidance to make this program a roadmap for the students and teachers towards the ocean of knowledge providing courses. I also thank Dr. Kamal Alaskar, sir, the session guest, and Professor Nripesh Kumar Nrib, the spoke local chapter, Bharti Vidya Peet, Institute of Management, Kulhapur for organizing this event. I thank all the listeners for their patience listening. With the permission of chair, I declare that the NPTEL Awareness e-workshop is over. Thank you so much. Jayashree. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dar, sir. Thank you, Nirpesh, sir. Thank you all for the, uh, joining this session. Yes, sir, madam, this feedback link will be live for...